What's up, guys? Who's ready to learn this? One, two, set, go. All right, well, if you don't know already what song that was, that was the chorus from Take On Me by AHA. And this is from our intermediate level arrangement from the Playground Sessions interactive app. Tap that card above if you want to try a free trial of that app. But in the meantime, let's get started by breaking this thing down. I'm going to start with the right hand melody first. Before we start talking about notes, I want to draw your attention to the three sharps that we see in the top left, right at the beginning of the notation. That, of course, is our key signature, and it tells us that we're in the key of A major. There are three sharps in the key of A major in that order. F sharp, dropping down to C sharp, and up to G sharp. And there's our scale, and that's kind of the harmony that we're going to be messing with today in the key of A major. Now, right next to that, we see two numbers, a four and a four. That's our time signature, and that just tells us that we're going to be playing this song four beats per measure, and that the quarter note gets one beat. This is very common. In fact, this is often referred to as common time instead of 4-4 four, four time. All right, now let's get our hand up. Right hand thumb is going to be below middle C, right here on A. That's two ledger lines below the staff, as we can see. We're going to stretch our hand position kind of wide for this first melodic phrase. A. Fourth finger looks like it's on G, but don't forget our key signature. It's actually going up to G sharp in that second measure. And then our pinky is going to round out with an A tied to another A. There's our first phrase. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Tie, two, three, four. Okay, next line down. We're playing the same note again, that A. But take a look at the finger number above that new A. It's not a five anymore, it's one. That means we're going to be jumping up our hand position. Same note, but with our thumb instead. And now we're going to keep wide so our third finger can play E. And that's a dotted half note, which only gets three counts. And that dotted half note is tied to an eighth note, which gets a half of a count. So we only have a half of a count left in this measure before we've reached our four beats per measure. And we're going to play an F sharp for that final eighth note beat. We're going to tie that to a whole note, which is then tied to another whole note, okay? So this is not very much different from our last phrase, rhythmically speaking, but it looks a bit more complicated. All that's happening, though, is we're arriving at our third note of the phrase a little early. So phrase one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four very symmetrical and rhythmically simple, right? Well, now in the second phrase, it's the same idea, but one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. We're just anticipating that third note right before the next measure. To be precise, an eighth note beat before the next measure, half a beat before. That's it, so we'll go one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four, and one, two, three, and tied again. Now, looking down to the third line of notation, this is our third phrase. We're going to put our thumb on what looks like a C, but don't be fooled and don't forget about our key signature, guys. We need that to be a C sharp. So to get our thumb to C sharp, we really want to slide our hand back towards the back of the keys. Otherwise, we're going to have to turn our wrist to try and reach it, and that's going to be uncomfortable and awkward for our hand to do. So our fourth finger just played F sharp, right? Now we're gonna slide back so our thumb can play C sharp. Once again, we're opening up our hand to a wider position. So our two finger can play G sharp, third finger then plays A, and it's the same rhythm that we saw in the second phrase. All right, now instead of tying this whole note to another whole note, we're gonna rest and play a bit of a new figure here. We're going to play one and two and three and four and one more time. One and two and three and four and. 
What we're doing there is resting on beat one. We're playing B with our fourth finger on beat two with an eighth note. Then the second half of beat two, we're playing C sharp with our pinky, tying it over to another eighth note, walking back down to B with our fourth finger, and finally landing on a quarter note, A with our third finger. All right, final line down. We're gonna rest on beat one, and our thumb should already be ready on this E right here. Dotted half note, tied to a whole note, tied to a whole note. All right, final measure. We see a half rest and then an eighth rest. We're going to play the same note we just did, this E, but we need to do it with our fifth finger. So we're going to kind of reverse what we did earlier. We're going to jump down and play the same note with a different finger. So this melody, guys, is really cool because we start low and we stretch wide and we continue to move up in range. And then finally, towards the end, we start to move back. If you know this song already and you love to sing along with it, you already know that this melody covers a huge range. It starts pretty low and it gets way up in the stratosphere. So the same is true here on the piano and we need to take advantage of these hand position changes. Remember, moving into the second line of notation, we switch our fifth finger on A for our thumb on A and that is a really crucial move to allow us to jump up in our range. Okay, same thing coming down towards the end. Thumb on E, tied, tied, and then we're going to use the rest in the final measure to jump down and get our pinky on that same note. All right, I think it's time for us to practice this now in time. I want to cue up a metronome, but we're not going to use a boring old metronome. We're going to use our backing track from my interactive app. This is an interactive app that you guys can all get to if you don't have it already. You can play along with the band, as I like to say, instead of just those clicks or beeps. And I'm going to cue up a demo here for you guys at our slow tempo. Once we get this down at the slow speed, we'll speed things up. Get your hands up and try this with me, you guys. Get your hand up, thumb One, on A. Two, set. Here we go. go. Stretch wide, four to G sharp, five on A. Hold it and look ahead. Remember, thumb on the same note. Jump up. Good. Three on E. Tie it. Four on F sharp. Now, a little bit early, right? Looking ahead, thumb on C sharp, slide back. Now two on G sharp, three on A, anticipate it, good. Get ready, four on B, rest, E. We're gonna keep holding that, and in this rest, we'll shift down, pinky on E. That's all there is to it. Now feel free to rewind and play back with me at this speed as needed, but when you're ready, we're gonna speed it up to full tempo. And here's a warning, it's pretty fast, you guys. Let's do it. One, two, set, Ready, go. go. Thumb on the same note. Anticipate. Thumb on C sharp. Rest and shift down. Okay, that's it for the right hand for now. Let's switch gears now to the left hand harmony. On screen, we can see a lot of clear notes, as I like to call them. They're not filled in, right? We've got half notes and whole notes. And that means that we're gonna be playing a little bit slower than the right hand, and that's good. The left hand, though, is not easy on its own because we're still adding some rhythm. Instead of just playing a chord and then moving on to a new chord, we're going to be doubling some of the notes in the chords per measure so that we add rhythm. And I'll give you just a little preview here. So the second half of each chord, I'm repeating my top note. Let's dig into it. The first measure, we see an A5 in the chord symbol. That's an A5. That means it's just the root and the fifth, no third. So technically, we don't know if it's minor or major because we're omitting the third, hence an A fifth. Now, if we remind ourselves of our key signature, we can be pretty confident that it's major because C sharp would be the third. However, it's not present in this particular chord voicing, so we're only calling it an A fifth, and we're playing it as a half note. The second half of the measure, we're gonna just play the top note. So one, two, three, four, next measure, our pinky's dropping down to G sharp.
again. Don't forget that key signature. And then same idea here. We're going to play one, two, and then the top note, three, four. Now, the next measure, both of these notes are sharp, F sharp and C sharp. And then we'll repeat the C sharp in the second half. Fourth measure, we've already got our fingers ready for this. Four on A, one on D, right? We just did this. Now look, we were already ready for that. A and D, and we'll finish the second half of this measure with the top note again. All right, let's review the first four measures. We've got five on A, one on E, that's our A fifth, right? We'll play that, we'll play the top note in the second half of the measure. Pinky then shifting down to G sharp. Again, second half of the measure, E. Now we're gonna open up five and two on F sharp and C sharp. And we'll repeat the top note. And then four and one already ready on A and D and the top note. Let's put that in time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, good. So there's the first four measures of this left hand chorus. And guess what? The next four measures, exactly the same. So we're literally repeating the first four measures a second time. Now, when we get to our third line down, we're gonna stop that rhythmic pattern for a bit. We're gonna go to whole notes. And we're going to play a block chord, this time a major triad, right? Not just the fifth. So we have A major for the whole measure. Then we're going to jump up to an E major chord in second inversion. That looks like this. And don't forget, there's a G sharp on top. So maybe you noticed my hand sliding back towards the back of the keys. Again, that's because my thumb is playing that G sharp. So A root position. Watch, I'll slide to the right and back for that chord. Next, we have F sharp minor over C sharp. That looks like this. And then our fourth chord of this phrase, we're just moving the bottom note up to D. So one more time, these four block chords go A, two, three, four, E over B, two, three, four, F sharp minor over C sharp, three, four, and D, two, three, four. Okay, the final line here, we're still playing block triads, but we're doing them in half notes. And instead of just playing the top note for the second half of the measure like we did earlier, we're going to be playing the entire chord both times. And let's go over those chords now. So the first one is an inversion of an A chord. That means we're playing C sharp, E, and A. So block chord, one, two, three, four. Next measure, bringing our thumb to G sharp. So we're going to slide back, one, two, three, four. Next we have D major, one, two, then E major, one, two, three, four. Let me play these last four measures for you one more time, and then we're gonna put this whole thing to our backing track at the slow speed. Here's the final four measures one more time. All right, I'm gonna hit play in my app. By the way, you guys, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, Tap that card above if you didn't do it earlier. It says, what are you waiting for? That's because we have a 30-day free trial of our interactive app, only exclusively for YouTubers. So you tap that card right there, type in your email and your name, no payment up front, and you can get 30-day access to our interactive app. And you'll get full access, by the way. It's not a limited version. 30 days, no strings attached, no payment up front. You can cancel any time. All right, here we go, slow tempo demo of the left hand for the chorus. Let's go. One, two, Ready, set, go. go. Now, same thing again. Get ready for block chords. Slide up, a little further. Back to half notes, here we go. I really love this song for a few reasons. One reason is when we get to that third phrase here, 
the drums change to a halftime feel. I know you all know what I'm talking about. It's really dancey in the first half of the chorus, and then the drum pattern changes and it sits back, and it kind of feels like it's slowing down. That's a really effective trick here on behalf of AHA. And then when we get to the final phrase here, the drums pick back up. Super fun. And what we see in the piano arrangement is we go to whole note rhythms in that third phrase. We're slowing our rhythm down. That's to add to that effect. All right, let's try this now at full tempo. One, two, set, Here we go. go. Now half time. Back to half time. Sweet. All right, guys, we got the right hand melody and now the left hand part down as well. All we need to do now is figure out how to put these hands together. So let's talk about that now. All right, guys, here we go. We're looking at the grand staff now, treble clef and bass clef. We're looking at both hands. So right hand, remember, starts way down here. Left hand is right here. Now, before I hit play on this whole thing, I just want to walk through a bit of how these hands match up. Typically speaking, at least for the first half of the chorus, the right hand is playing longer rhythms. The left hand is a bit busier. While we're holding the right hand for the second half, we'll play the new left hand note. We're going to tie the right hand here, keep going with the left. Same idea for the next phrase, although definitely want to be careful about those eighth notes that we see in the middle of that second phrase. What we want to make sure we do there is play that anticipated note a bit earlier, right? We want to play that F sharp before we play the left hand part. So that would look like this. Right, left. That may take some extra practice, but when you're feeling ready, let's try this together now in time. Let's bring in the band at the slow tempo. One, two, set, ready, go. play. Ready? Right, left. Good. Here comes half time. Right, left. Right hand down. All right, everyone, as always, Rewind and play back with me as many times as you need at that slow speed. It really helps to have patient, repetitive practice with whatever you're working on. But if you're feeling ready to wrap this thing up at full speed, let's do it, you guys. I'm ready. Let's try it together. One, two, set, ready, go. go. There we go, my friends. Now, just as a reminder, we've got this full song in all difficulty levels in the Playground Sessions app. This was just the chorus at the intermediate level. If you want to learn more of this song or learn it at a different difficulty level or learn a different song altogether, you guys got to check out the Playground Sessions app. Either way, I'll see you guys here soon for the next YouTube lesson. The features you saw on screen today can be at your fingertips with the Playground Sessions app co-created by music legend Quincy Jones, Playground teaches the piano with interactive feedback and gaming features, all while using your favorite songs. All right, guys, I'm Phil. Hit subscribe so I can see you for the next video.